Yo, what's up y'all? Welcome back to another Roblox Studio video where today I'm going to be showing you how to use Roblox's pathfinding service to create moving NPCs. So we see here I've went ahead and created a basic grid layout with concrete path, but we see I've also made a plastic path with a line of concrete down the middle just to show how this means the NPCs aren't going to cross over the median, they're not going to cross into the grass or the plastic background, they're going to stay on the road, they're going to stay in the middle of the road, and we can control the exact path with invisible parts. Now in this video I'm going to go ahead and assume that you already know how to generate an NPC into your game and if you don't I would strongly recommend that you go ahead and watch part 1 of this video where I show everyone how to create a player NPC spawner where the NPCs are based off the player's friends list. But anyways our goal for this video is to take spawn points which I've created at the ends of every one of these paths and we're going to take these spawn points, place the NPC onto a random one and have them set a goal to a different random one and they're going to have to walk across this grid layout or across this concrete line right here in order to get to their goal. So to begin we want to find our NPC generator script. For me I'm going to use the call script that I created last video. We can parent it to this but you can also parent it to the NPC handler but it'll be a lot more work in order to get the actual mover script working. So what we can do, since we have our call script here, it's a local script, we're going to go ahead and make a new local script under the call script. But if this is a server-sided generator that you created, you can also use a server script. And what we can call this new local script, we can just call it NPC Mover. And under this local script, we also need to create a new object value, and we can call this object value NPC. And since we cannot parent a local script to workspace, we cannot parent it to the NPC. So we need to locate our NPC another way. And when we eventually parent this NPC mover script to replicate it first, we're going to have to find the NPC. But anyways, we can go ahead and disable this NPC mover script. And now that we have our NPC mover script, what we can do, we can go to whatever script we parented this to. So since this NPC mover is a local script, I'm going to go ahead and parent it to replicated first. So what I can go ahead and do is get our replicated first, so local replicated first, is game get service, replicated first. Make sure you don't put replicated storage, because if it's replicated storage, local scripts will also not be able to run, the same as workspace. Now that we have this, we can go after we get our NPC. So once we have our NPC already, we can go ahead and clone our NPC mover script. So local mover script or just mover script NPC mover clone. And what we need to do is we need to parent this to replicated first. So mover.parent is replicated first. And then we need to go ahead and make sure that this script knows who the NPC is. So we can do mover.npc.value is just our NPC. Since it's an object value, it doesn't need to be a string. It doesn't need to be a number. It can just be the actual instance of the NPC. And now we need to go ahead and enable our mover script, so we can just do mover.enabled is true. So another thing I would strongly recommend you do, since this is on the player side, and our NPC right now is just called rig. What we can do up here, we can just set our NPC.name equal to empty quotation marks. Since this will set the name to nothing, we won't see the word rig above every NPC we spawn in. So it'll just look like they're actual players. And now that we have this, we can begin scripting our NPC mover. So we can go into our NPC mover here. And the first thing we need to get is our pathfinding service. So local path service is just going to be game, get service, pathfinding service. So what we can do now, we can go ahead and get our NPC. The local NPC is going to be the value from before. So script.npc.value. And we can get our humanoid. So local humanoid is npc.humanoid. Now we need to get our actual points. So as we see in workspace, I've went ahead and called our folder overall NPC paths. And under this, I have a folder called NPC points. We just need to get this folder where we have all of our spawn points. You can call this whatever you want. Just make sure you access it under the workspace. So for me, I'm going to get local NPC paths is workspace find first child NPC paths. And then we need to actually get our points. So local NPC points is NPC paths find first child NPC points. So now when we get a random spawn point into endpoint, we can first start by getting our variables, so local spawn point and endpoint. And we don't set these equal to anything because what we'll do now, we'll generate a random spawn and endpoint. 
so we can do for this is a repeat loop so we just type in repeat drop a line and we will set our spawn point equal to npc points get children number math.random one through the number of npc points get children so once we have this we can go ahead and select it all copy it paste it in and set this to our end point we drop a line task out wait just to make sure this doesn't overload and what we're going to be repeating this loop until is we're going to want to wait until the spawn point doesn't equal our end point and now that we have our spawn point and our end point we need to go ahead and move our npc move npc to spawn we can go ahead and set npc pivot to spawn point dot c frame you also want to make sure that your npc points are in the air and they can collide to set to false or else it might interfere with this pivot to right here and now for our animations i'm going to provide the basic r15 animations for idling and walking but if you're using an r6 npc you're going to need to find the official walk and idle animation from roblox for r6 but the basic way we're going to set this up is local idle animation is going to be instance.new animation and we're going to parent this to our humanoid and for our animation ID, we're going to set idle animation animation ID. We can set this to the official Roblox R15 idle animation, which I'll provide in the description. And the last thing we need to do is load the idle animation. So we're going to set idle animation equal to humanoid animator load animation. And then we're going to put our idle animation. I want to make sure that this is a colon and that we use animator. And now what we can do, we can just copy all of this over. We can paste it in and we can set this as our walk animation. And we also want to make sure that we change our animation ID of the walk animation to the actual walk animation, which I'll also provide in the description. And now that we have our animations out of the way, we can go ahead and use the official Roblox documentation for pathfinding service to help us set up this pathfinding script. So the first thing we need to do just to make sure the actual function itself runs through fine, we need to set four variables. So for our variables, we can go ahead and set local waypoints, next waypoint, reached, and blocked, as these are the four variables that this pathfinding function is going to use. And now we're also going to need to determine the costs of walking on each type of block. So what we're going to do is we're going to determine what the NPC will and won't walk on. And for this, we're going to set local M costs is going to be a new table where we prioritize smaller numbers. So for me, the paths are concrete, but the actual floor itself is plastic. So what I'm gonna do is set concrete equal to one. So the NPC will want to walk over concrete. And then for plastic, I'm gonna set it equal to a thousand. So the NPC absolutely does not wanna walk over plastic. They'll always prioritize walking over concrete. And you can set this to whatever you want. You can add grass equals a thousand. You can add smooth plastic and set it to a thousand. You can add whatever material you want. You can also set as many low numbers as you want. And now to actually create our path, what we need to do, local path is equal to path service, create path. We insert a new table into these parentheses where agent radius is equal to three. This is how wide the NPC is, how far away they're gonna wanna be from the edge. We wanna set our agent height which I'll put at five. And now we need to also set agent can jump, which I'm gonna set to false. This is just if you want them to jump or not. And then for our costs, we can set this equal to M cost. So we'll use these costs right here in determining where the path will take the NPC. But now we need to actually move our NPC so we can put local function, move NPC, and we just need our end point or our destination. So this is gonna use the function from the documentation and we're just going to modify it to play our animation to destroy the NPC if there's an error. And we're going to go ahead and implement our NPC points into this script. So the first thing we need to do is compute our path or attempt to lay it out. So we need to actually p call a function so we can get local success. Error message is going to be p call function. We want to make sure our parentheses are set up like this. So that when we drop a line, it's going to have an end with a parenthesis on the side. Now we need to do for this path compute async and in this compute async we're going to get npc dot humanoid root part and we're also going to get our endpoint dot position so now this is going to attempt to compute the path 
then what we can do we can drop down here if the path succeeds so if the path generates correctly we want to check if success and the path status so path.status equals equals enum.pathstatus.success then we're going to get our waypoints so waypoints is equal to path get waypoints and we need to check if the path is blocked so blocked is equal to path.blocked connect function so if the path is blocked we connect the function to it and we get our blocked waypoint index you know what we need to do in this function is we need to check if blocked waypoint index is greater than or equal to next waypoint then we need to disconnect our blocked function so blocked disconnect then we need to move our npc to the endpoint so the next thing we're going to need to check if not reached then so if the npc still needs to move what we're going to do is we're going to set reached equal to humanoid dot move to finished and then we go ahead and connect a function to this where our variable is going to be reached and in this function we need to check if reached and next waypoint is less than number of waypoints then what we're going to do next waypoint plus equals one and we're going to move our humanoid so humanoid move to waypoints number next waypoint dot position so this is going to go ahead and make the npc begin moving and we need to actually implement our animation so what we can do if walk animation dot is playing doesn't equal true so if they're currently sitting idle then what we're going to do we're going to stop the idle animation and we're going to play the walk animation now we drop down one end and then after this we type in else so if the npc has gone ahead and reached their destination then what we're going to do is stop the walk animation we're going to play the idle animation and we're going to disconnect these two functions right here so reached disconnect and blocked disconnect and now we need to actually destroy our npc because they reached their goal so what we can do if we want we can go ahead and put task.wait1 so after this pause what we're going to do we're going to get our npc and we're going to destroy it we're going to get our script and we're going to destroy it so now we drop down three ends we go to this end right here drop a line next waypoint is going to be set equal to two because this is going to be the start of the function if nothing's already moved then we're going to set our next waypoint to two because we'll already be at the first waypoint and what we're going to do humanoid move to we're going to get our waypoints and we're going to get the number of next waypoint so this is going to be our next waypoint and we're going to get the position so we'll move to the position of the next waypoint and this will go ahead and start the script and now we need to check if there's no success or if there's an error message so what we do else we're going to need to destroy the npc if the path doesn't load so we'll get our npc and we're going to destroy it but we can also check what the error message is so we can warn and then we put in our error message so if anything goes wrong it'll print something out it'll print it orange to make sure we see it and it will tell us exactly what went wrong and then the final thing we need to do in this script all the way at the bottom we can go ahead and call this move npc function and send in our endpoint so once the npc first loads in we're going to go ahead and get all these variables up here and it's going to go all the way down here we're going to spawn in our move npc function and it's going to go down here check if there's a path compute the path and if the path succeeds we're going to go ahead and walk through the path with our animations and if it doesn't succeed it's going to destroy our npc it's going to give us an error message and we also need to make sure it destroys our script because there's no npc to move anymore so we can get our script and we can destroy it as well so now that we have our npc mover we have our call script that's going to parent this mover to replicated first and give it the npc and we have our npc generator that will constantly spawn in new npcs what we can do is we can go ahead and test this out so once we get in the game we turn around i have my npc spawning here we see that they spawn in fine they load in fine but then once the actual npc mover function kicks in it's unable to cast an instance to vector 3 so it actually kills the npc it destroys them because they cannot compute the path so back in our script up here when we compute our path when we get our npc.humanoid root part we also want to make sure we get the position of the humanoid root part 
And since we didn't get the position, it was trying to get the start vector three from the humanoid root part, which is an instance, which it cannot do. So it was messing up the script and it was sending us the error message. Now back in the game again, we turn around, we see our NPC spawns in fine. And then once the NPC mover script kicks in, he gets teleported to a random point at the end of one of these paths. And he'll begin moving to the next one. We see if he's on the plastic path, he'll stay down the middle. And the NPCs are going to make sure that they don't cut across any open space. They want to stay on the path as much as they can. But now since we have our NPC moving script completed, that will do it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you have any suggestions or ideas, please let me know in the comments down below. But anyways, I'll see you all in the next video.